Greetings, welcome to Tribal Jazz Man Scholar. One of the most beautiful books that I've been able to encounter among a host of great books out there is a book by Edward Wilson called Biophilia, in which he posits that humans have this innate love of living things, of living forms <clears throat> and living processes, and we're drawn to them, as he says, like moths to a flame. And um, his book is full of small chapters that present nature in a way that makes you love nature even more than you already do. And uh, one of the things that he says in there, he has a thing he calls the, it's the biologic time clock. But he describes a conversation between two men, semi-fictional but he describes this conversation between two men, well-known scientists, as they were leaving a lecture about Darwin's theories, right at the time that Darwin's ideas were becoming well-known and how controversial they were. And he describes these two men walking from the lecture <clears throat> along a, 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 a lamp-lit street in the evening, and he just takes a little fragment of their conversation and then he slows it down to talk about what's actually happening in the body. So he takes a fraction of a second and he stretches it out over about two pages to describe the sound wave striking the ear, the impulse and what actually happens to these neurotransmitters that go to the brain that translate the sound into known lexica, lexical references of words and then how there's a pondering of a response and all the synaptic firings that generate a response and then how the impulse goes to the jaw to begin to open and exactly what happens in each of the muscle cells to allow the actual expansion of the jaw muscle so that the mouth can open as the head is turning to answer. So you basically slow down the biology so that you see this elaborate sequence of thousands of events happening in this very, very, very microscopic world. And, um, and then he says, so, th so this is the, the moment slowed down, and you can see this intricate, elaborate network of, of, of biologic activity going on that's going on so fast that w unless we slow it down, we can't even consider it. And then he talks about a bog uh, in Finland, and he says, imagine you could speed up geologic time and have an aerial view of these forests as they're growing and becoming denser and denser forests and as they begin to drop more and more mulch and cumulative you know leaf and debris and de all over the ground and how this stuff as it soaks into the ground it begins to absorb the moisture and then it forms a bog and then the bog affects the root systems and these trees collapse and then over another thousand years they grow back up and it creates another bog and he describes a cycle between this forest and this water and this bog and the peat and how the peat forms and how long it takes and and he describes this cycle as going over thousands of years but he speeds it up to visually for the for the reader to see it all in a matter of five seconds five ten seconds the cycling of forest and debris and bog and moisture and water and this beautiful cycle and he basically says this is one of the biologists time clocks is that it allows you to see things you can speed them up or slow them down. And, he, and it's one of the beautiful chapters in Edward Wilson's Biophilia that I love. And uh, the only other image that I wanted to share is he talks about taking a handful of, of soil and spreading it across a piece of material. And this is what biologists do who are naturalists and they're studying. And he, and then he, and he says, you know, you don't see a lot going on except that if you look closely, you start seeing the insects moving around. And he describes the types of insects that you could see in a handful of soil. And then he says, but if we go a little closer and he zooms in through description into a droplet of water that's holding two little teeny fibers of roots that's between two little fibers of roots. And he talks about this little moisture. It's, it's almost invisible. It's such a small droplet of water. And then he takes you into the droplet and he describes the life cycle of some organisms within there. And one of them, which is very striking, adheres to the edge of the of with the leafing material and it enters the water droplet and it has a little funnel-like device and it has within that a little ch 
charge, like an explosive charge. It fires a dart containing its egg. And there's a kind of a, I don't know if it's a rotifer, but there's a, a little swimming organism that lives in the water. And when it swims by, it tickles these little fibers at the end of the cone that sets off the explosive charge and it fires the little projectile into the body of the little squirming little insect. And then he describes the entire life cycle and how it eventually explodes out of the skin and attaches itself and creates a new cone. And, but you see an entire world of, bi world of biology in a microscopic drop of moisture that you, can, you can't even see. And it's just, it's a wondrous book. And it, uh, it reminded me as I read it of, of my innate inborn love of living things and living processes. And um, it's one of the things that has led to uh, the eco-psychology movement um, that has fed other aspects of evolutionary psychology. And it's one of these seminal works that is part of the new story. And uh, I wanted to share that. Travel Jazzman Scholar on Biophilia and Edward Wilson, signing off for now. Thanks for joining me.